I mentioned real number modeling. These constructs have been around for quite a while in all of the leading digital verification languages. You know, it's a way for users to perform verification of their analog or mixed signal designs with discreetly simulated real values. That's simply what it is. You use a digital solver instead of a SPICE solver, and of course, it's much, much faster. It also opens up other possibilities, like assertion-based verification that you can utilize. But real number modeling has languished. It really hasn't taken off. In the last couple of years, it started to take off more. And that's because deriving the real number model from your analog outputs is not straightforward and it's not easy. So we're trying to build a bridge between the digital and analog worlds within Cadence to help you. And we do this by having our, in fact, Andy Eliopoulos is here. He works on our digital solver teams. Where's Andy at? There he is. <laughs> so Andy works with us and, and my teams on kind of crossing this bridge, if you will. And we utilize AMS Designer as the cockpit for mixed signal verification. And then Ian Dennison is here. Is Ian Dennison here? There he is up there in the corner. So Ian works in my team. He, we have a, a, about a 60-person team out of Livingston, uh, Scotland. And that group is working on a couple technologies, our schematic model generator. It's a brand new technology coming out for building analog models. And another technology we call AMS and DMV for digital metric verification for validating those models. And so if you have questions on that, Ian's your man. He's sitting up there in the top. Here's an excellent example of industry giant Texas Instruments. And they utilize real number modeling in a digital-centric mixed signal verification flow very, very effectively. The results here are stunning, right? A 300x performance if you can move out of transistor-based simulation into real number modeling and event-driven analysis. OK. I've dealt with a lot of analog circuit designers over my years, and we'll, de and we'll deal with a lot more. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of letters like this. You know, I'm really not trying to make analog circuit designers become digital verification engineers, nor is the reverse going to happen. We all know that. Um, I'm simply suggesting that there are multiple paths as part of your overall verification plan that you need to look at and utilize. Now, let's suppose that the analog stuff really needs to be kept analog and needs to be understood as analog. Does that mean you're stuck? Not at all. Using modeling, we can increase the level of abstraction which can take many forms, again, depending on the expertise you have in your company or the expertise you want to contract out externally. And we have folks within Cadence's services and within our VCAD teams that can get you up and running with behavioral models quite quickly. And while Fast Spice and Spice are always part of the verification equation, Cadence has brought a lot of digital functionality to your virtuoso cockpit for you to utilize. And that's not going to stop. We're investing very, very heavily in continuing down this path. So regardless of bringing in more analog, the heart of your functional verification method inside of Virtuoso is the hierarchy editor. Here you can control all of your configurations. And this affords our customers the ability to manage all of your design revisions. And you have many of them when you're going through complex designs using Cadence's various data management partners. And many of them, I think, are helping to sponsor this, this event today. So we appreciate that. Um, and from a digital perspective, you can run AMS design right from the command line. Or if you want a more interactive approach to doing your functional verification, set up your test benches and measurement requirements inside of ADE Excel and run the simulations with AMS Designer for a more interactive approach. ADE Excel can grab your design from the hierarchy editor and or your system Verilog test bench just as it is. So again, an example of some of the integration that's underway. No modifications are required for that. And we have two leading um, waveform viewers, one to handle digital and one to handle analog. Um, clearly, if you're worried about parasitics with your signal-to-noise ratio, you're going to be in Viva. If you're worried about you know, system Verilog test bench and its code, you're going to be using SimVision, all integrated in the same environment. Now, the emphasis of my talk to date has been on, on, on verification. But at some point, you have to implement that design physically. 
I'm a pleased, I'm pleased to announce that in our next major release of Virtuoso, that'll be early next year, in 2013, we're going to address a couple major challenges for mixed signal design. But as with all things in mixed signal, this has really been an evolution. And the first major tenet of making this work was the development of the open access database, which I think many of you utilize now. I know many of you have moved from Virtuoso 5.1 to Virtuoso 6.1. And this really enables us to kind of decrease the import-export steps that are required when you do mixed signal design. But while OA was important, it was far from sufficient. And you can notice that in this diagram here, that if you have Verilog, that you still have to kind of go through, even if it's a small amount of digital, you still have to go through the encounter path. And that's not comfortable for some of our analog engineers that do small amounts of digital. So you've got to set up a digital physical hierarchy. Those things are kind of cumbersome. So we're trying to address that. So our first major change is the ability to fully characterize the digital cells inside of Virtuoso before placing them in the top level of the design. So again, in 2013, we are actually working with a couple of the companies that are here today that are looking at early versions of this code right now. This means you don't have to create a digital physical hierarchy and that it's much, much easier to make top-level ECOs. You can do in-context encounter optimization, timing-aware schematic-driven layout, low-power or CPF-aware schematic-driven layout. And this effort is headed up by Jacques-Olivier Pierre Noir, who runs our Sophia France office. I don't know if Jacques-Olivier is here. He was come ah, there he is. Hi, Jacques-Olivier, you must come in this morning. Thank you for joining us. So if you have questions on this, Jacques Olivier is over there and he can answer those. The second major change is to get rid of the Verilog in step and to allow the text to flow through Virtuoso intact, drive layout creation, and finally transfer to encounter for final SOC sign off. While inside Virtuoso, the text description is alive and no longer a black box. It can be probed just like your schematic. So this is being worked on in combination of Jacques Olivier's team and Ian Dennison's teams. Um, we will be using this technology and the prior technology in our early adopter programs this year and roll them out in 2013. We think this is a big move to improve mixed signal interoperability between Encounter and Virtuoso. We all realize that mixed signal design is highly complex. And that is why Cadence invests so heavily in the tools and technologies to address your design challenges. I focused on verification because it's probably the hardest piece of the puzzle and takes a lot of resources and a lot of time. Um, but I also talked a little bit about the implementation side of it. But the reality is that mixed signal design extends beyond verification and implementation and goes into, this, goes into the package and the die and the board the IP, the foundry support, the enclosure, all of these impact the mixed signal design. And we have a healthy ecosystem to kind of help you get your designs done. Modeling is clearly a good way to abstract AMS functionality. We, we're seeing a lot more demand, a lot more behavioral models being written, a lot more of those models being parameterized and reused. And we're working to make model creation and debugging and accuracy easier. This will enable a digital-centric, metric-driven verification methodology for complex M SOCs. And we're investing in low-power verification to address multiple power modes and the difficult power transition between those modes. From my perspective, only Cadence has the technology expertise and ecosystem to address these mixed-signal designs.